What's up, YouTube? Angry Jackalope Rob Ricks. It's that time. It is the time to have a discussion. Say what's up. Do a little alcohol drink. Say what's up to Price. What's up, my brother from another mother? Hope you had a fucking great one for Thanksgiving. What's up, big man Bowie? You need pussy tonight? I know you hit that shit last, uh, last week, if I'm not mistaken. I think you guys are going to get some of that trim, trim, trimity, trim, trim, trim. We're not talking about trimming a Christmas tree. So, yeah, motherfuckers, I got, uh, I got a show lined up, put it together kind of last minute, as I often do. We got Stocking Wolf and Robert Wolf. We got the Stocking and the Wolf in the motherfucking his house. Oh, hell yeah. Steve, my brother. Good to see you. Good to fucking see you. We got the usual suspects up in this motherfucker. Let's uh, see what we have on tap for this evening's drink. I couldn't decide. I kind of kind of was torn. I wanted something, you know, just a little bit to kind of savor and enjoy. So I got this Grand Mariner. You yeah. If I recall, this shit is delicious. And then I also got some of this motherfucking... Uh, uh, Patron Citronge. I don't know how we fucking say that shit. What's up, Jay? All right, so I'm going to start with some of this, uh, this Grand Mariner, Manera, Manera, whatever fucking hoity toity shit. I know it just tastes good, though. It tastes delicious, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see if I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This one, this one has like that real. Let's see, yeah, orange and cognac. That you can smell the Oh my lord, you can smell the orange. It's just so bing it's a it's a fucking festive ass drink. It really is. And I'm gonna go ahead and have my regular shot glass, but instead of chugging them, I'm, I'm gonna basically pour it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Happy fucking holidays, motherfuckers. Hope you guys had a great fucking turkey day. It's a little bit sad for us. We uh, This is our first year we didn't actually do the cooking ourselves. Uh, usually we prepare a fucking massive feast. I mean, you know, the mashed potatoes, the... Uh, the well, I'm not going to get too drunk, Jay. I'm only going to drink a little bit of it. What's up, Johnny Ball? Um, you know, we make the mashed potatoes, the turkey, the stuffing, the, 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 the gravy, the cranberry... You know, sometimes we go out and put some fucking ham with the shit, some green beans, you know, just, 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 just the whole motherfucking get down. Backwoods! What's up? Man, we got motherfuckers in the house tonight. God damn, I better make sure I have some funny shit. Well, I do. I have an epic funny bit we're going to put at the very fucking end. But, but, excuse me, before we get there, we got to do a little bit of freaking me with the Grand Mariner, freaking me out with the Grand Mariner. Oh man, that's got a really, really good smell to it. Mmm, it's good. Ooh. I don't like the finish very much, but the flavor all the way from the front to the back is pretty good. Oh yeah. And then it goes back to good. That's a little weird. Usually, yeah. How to finish is not quite bad at the end. A little weird. Gray man. Gray man, what's up, my brother? All right, let's go ahead. I, I can't spend a whole night just sipping, so I'll just go ahead and drink it. Woo. Holidays are here again. Wow. Oh, I'm drinking a little. I'll show you what I'm drinking. Oh, yeah. There she is. Turn her like that so you can see. Grand Mariner. I guess that's how you say this shit. I don't fucking know how you say this shit. Goddess of Jinx. Why? Thank you. I'm glad you like my beer. This is kind of unique. I don't do the full, you know, man, monster beard shit. I kind of just I like it this way, you know. It's kind of like a modified, um, 
forgot what this shit's called. Because I don't even have the the handles on the side. I went with those little pointy points. That was like a rob. I just kind of added that shit, a little edge to it. The so truth be told is to kind of hide the fat, you know what I'm saying? Make it a little less obvious that I got fat, fat there. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're getting it started, motherfuckers. All right, let's try some of this, some of this Patron. Patron. Angel. Fuck yeah. You guys are getting in here before we even start, and I'm just getting a little bit of alcohol. Just a little bit of alcohol. Just to lubricate your brain cells. You know what I'm saying? It's good for the heart, thins the blood, makes it a little less, makes, makes it, uh, what you call it, uh, makes the heart pump more efficiently because the blood is thinner, smoother, makes it smoother to run through the old veins and the arteries and all of that jazz. All right, so this one, so we went from orange, this one is, um, this one here is uh, lime based. Oh wait, maybe this is not lime based. Hang on. Yeah, you know, so I, I was lucky because uh, yeah, it is lime. My uh, my cousin threw out an invitation. She said, "Hey, why don't you and the fam come down here?" And I was like, "All right." So we did, and it was cool. It was real nice, you know. And and uh, kids had the ball. We all hung out, this, that, and everything else. It was cool, but again, it was it was a little it broke tradition. So that was a little funky, you know what I mean? And so that that kind of sucked a little bit. But anyway. To your health, motherfuckers, I hope you guys had a very uh, fun-filled, amazing Thanksgiving, even if it was small, as long as, you know, you weren't laid up in a fucking gutter with a knife or a shiv stabbed up in your ribs and having a hard time breathing and, you know, you, you were sitting there going, fuck it, you know, and so I hope some of you had a chance to bust a nut and all that shit and... If so, fucking A. There you go, big man Bowie. All right, anyway. Oh, God damn, that's good. Mm -hmm. Whoa. That shit's delicious. That's dangerous. Oh, my God, that's like... That does not... That can't have barely any alcohol in it. Oh, it's fucking 70 proof. Oh, this is some dangerous shit right here, guys. This is deadly. Mm. I'm gonna drink this shit out the bottle. God damn. All right. I know you guys didn't uh, come here to see me get inebriated. Let's get into the news, shall we? Da -da -dun, da -da -dun -dun. This motherfucker right here. Bam. Jeff Bo Bezos. I almost, almost called his ass Bozos. Jeff Bezos is a hundred billion dollars. Now, this shit's crazy. Back in 95, I had a big flame war with Amazon. I was an early web developer and I was pushing for graphics. I wanted a fully immersive graphics, heavy, animated GIFs, sound effects, all the motherfucking bells and windows. Oh, shit. Nice, Angel. I hope she's not too young because, you know, I got a filthy-ass mouth and I, I don't I don't want to ruin some, some youngster's mind and everything. If she can handle, that's awesome. If not, you're going to have to explain some of this shit to her later. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Anyway, I love the name, by the way. Goddess of Jinx is awesome. Um, so I, I had a flame war with their head webmaster at Amazon back in the day because they were like, no, it's all about text. It's all about, you know, very streamlined, you know, blah, blah, blah. Oh, same age as my daughter. Yeah, my daughter's 17. And the shit she says, holy hell. Sometimes my daughter makes me blush. Anyway, which is amazing. Um so I had a big fucking flame war with Amazon back in the day. And I won, obviously. What's up, Tom Sawyer? Good. Go ahead and tag. Okay, I'm an irate nation. Nice. <laughs> nice. That's awesome, brother. Hell yeah. Okay, so um, anyway, I won the flame war against Amazon. 
because it was in this forum where we were just going at it. Boom, 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 boom. And a group of the people all agreed with me. They're like, that's inevitable. Web is going to be a fully graphical. They had no idea what this shit was going to end up because I've been doing this web shit since its inception. That's how fucking old I am. But look at it now. We're doing this shit. All of this, all across the web. So, yay, I won. But you know what? Ultimately, this motherfucker won because he's worth a fucking hundred billion dollars. Let's put that in perspective. You had one, only one, only fucking one. You had a billion fucking dollars. You could spend a thousand dollars a day and it would take you 2,749 fucking years to spend it on. Now, I didn't do the math. I didn't do the math. I didn't bring out the calculator and do all that shit. Blah, blah, blah. I just saw this and said, looks legit. So fucking, if my math's off, don't blame me. It's probably from the UK because look, they put the thousand. They didn't even put the comma and they put the dollar sign at the end. So, hey, I didn't make the graphic. I just stole the graphic. That's what I'm saying. Okay, let's keep it going. Now, we just finished Thanksgiving and, you know, I could comment and talk about the whole black Friday violence and this, that, and everything else. But I found something that was a little more fucking interesting. So I found out the FBI was flooded on Friday with more than 200,000 background motherfucking checks for gun purchases on Black Friday. 203,086. Holy shit. A new single day record. Okay. Beating last year's 185,713, which beat the previous year of 185,345. That's a pretty big jump because you can see those two years, this is the 300 and some odd. And then the next one, holy fuck. That's a big fucking jump. So that was fucking interesting. That was interesting. Then I saw another report that popped out talking about the decline of babies, women having babies, which is not all that surprising to me is really not there's a lot of stuff being pushed on people today for this netflix and chill instead of dating long term and you know getting to know a person and falling in love and wanting a family and things of that nature oh yeah there's some definitely some great fucking deals definitely great deals this weekend jay you're not lying and the thing that kind of blows my mind is uh not only is there a correlation between this and marriages declining, uh, there's also a, a decline in people that have uh, religious thinking and ideology and things of that nature. So we're seeing a lot of separation and um, departure from traditional American thinking. Right. So now we're kind of going to uncharted territory. But the funny thing is, these are not these are not symptoms of things that just kind of happened by accident. This shit has been orchestrated and designed, you know, because there's been statistics that show men and women have higher life expectancies when they're married, as opposed to those who are single or divorced. And that was a report called Why Marriage Matters uh, that was done a few years ago. Uh, and it's interesting because the root of all of this shit, I, you know, I, I've played a conspiracy one already. I, I don't want to do the conspiracy thing. I want to save time here. The root of all of this is depopulation. They're trying to trim the fat. And uh, the reason is the paradigms have shifted. Back in the day, you needed a huge workforce to go out and work the machines and all this other stuff. Well, now there's a lot of automation happening. If you look at Amazon, there's even automation being talked about with things like drones delivering packages. So there's a lot of interesting things that are happening and they're not being done on accident. The systematic dumbing down, the, uh, uh, the things that the kids today have to deal with as opposed to the shit we dealt with when we were growing up. It's a totally different landscape and it's all by design. Uh, things like the food, the, the things we eat, the things we drink. Diabetes kills more Americans every year than AIDS and breast cancer combined. Uh, diabetes killed in 2010, 69,000 people, breast cancer killed 40,000, AIDS killed 21,000. So it's kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
yep, Japan definitely is going on a decline. What's interesting, though, is even with all this effort, uh, in 2015, the total number of death was uh, 2,626,418, as opposed to 3,978,497 births. So we're still, the birth rate is still outpacing the death rate. So we're still growing. And that's evident by looking at the population. In 2015, there was 320.9 million people in America as of uh, November 24th, 2017. There's 325 million, 397, 120. So the population is still growing. So despite their best efforts with trying to uh, trim everything down, it's not working, which is why I believe, my personal belief, I've been saying this for a while, I think a lot of these things that happen where they start making it sound like they're going for our guns, they're not really going for our guns, okay? Uh, you know, they, they do these different things. So if we look at gun stats, you know, let's take a look at this right here. So number of registered weapons in the U.S. in 2017. Yeah, that is exactly why they put bad shit in our food and water. The stuff in the water is to keep us passive so that we don't, get angry as much as we should we're kind of passive the the fluoride and shit that's in the water is the same shit that they did to the jews in uh when the nazis were doing it they found that the the fluoride actually calmed them down and everything so that's why they have it in our fucking water it's not for our goddamn teeth but this shows you registered weapons in the u.s so obviously texas has a shit ton of guns and look at that second one isn't that surprising california is the second leading registered weapon in the U.S. Liberal gun-grabbing California is there. Florida, Virginia, Pennsylvania, Arizona, blah, 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 blah. And then you keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. There's Utah. That's where I live. That's not a whole lot, right? And you keep going down, keep going down, keep going down. And there's Idaho. I got some homies in Idaho. And we get all the way down here to Hawaii, my old stomping ground of 7,859. Not a lot of guns in Hawaii, which really was interesting to me. And and funny thing is, we take a look at stuff like violence. So, you know, they said there's a direct correlation between the number of guns and the violence. Okay? So even if you take all the mass shootings and everything, this is the total stats. Okay, these are from... FBI, all these other sources that kind of correlate all this data. You look, it was a much more dangerous time to live in 93. Um, 1993. Look at that shit. Look at, look at, look at how many deaths, right? Violent deaths. These are violent deaths. These aren't deaths caused by, you know, uh, these are violent deaths associated with crime. So if you look at the numbers, they're kind of on a downward trend, but then right here, you do see kind of a curvature here, right? But again, if you take a look at the whole thing, it's just kind of not too bad. Not too bad, you know? I know, right? I was pretty surprised by some of these stats. Kind of crazy. And then, of course, we see the dangerous cities. Okay, these are the most dangerous cities that have the highest number of violent crimes per 100,000 residents in the United States of America in 2016. Excuse me. So... Detroit is fucking, yes, FBI does include uh, suicide. Yes, they do. Um, it's easy this right here, and I was, like, curious, because I saw somebody that said, you know, most of these things happen in Democrat-controlled uh, areas. And I thought, yeah, probably not. You know, there there's probably some variants and different things and things like that. Oh, did you? Well, you're here, so it must have ended well, because... You're here unless you've got a bullet hole in you somewhere, Chance. Okay, I got to hear that fucking story. And so as I looked at the uh, the folks that run the show in these individual cities, indeed, we do see... Wow. Holy shit. You got shot, dude? And it bounced off you like motherfucking Superman? Ba-ding! Ba-ding! I had a gun pulled on me and the fucking thing misfired. The guy actually pulled the fucking trigger. It was right in my face. It was like, <clears throat> my whole innards just, I almost shit myself. It was fucking horrible. 
So if you had something like that go down with you, my fucking sympathies, brother, because that shit ain't fun. Not fun at all. <clears throat> so this shocked the shit out of me. Oh, okay. Was it sideways? Was it kill shot? Fuck you, motherfucker. I got your shit, nigga, right here. Woo, 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 you know? Was it something like that? So. Anyway, my thinking. I'll go back to the this one. Prominent Detroit from what I've seen in video. Yeah, sideways. Fuck. Well, you're all right. He probably would have missed you if he shot. Now, if he was aiming at the guy next to you, he might have got you. So. Here's what I'm thinking, guys. I said it before, and I'm going to say it again. Because if you're looking to trim the fat, obviously you can't go door to door and take all the guns because it ain't going to work. You might get away with one city, two cities. Like, they got away with that shit in uh, Katrina, but that was during an event. Okay? So what I think is going to really happen, and the more I sit and think about it, and the more I look at these stats, the more I'm like, yep, that's what I would fucking do. They're just going to fucking throw a fake EMP, knock the power grid out, step back in a bunker somewhere, eating some fucking, you know, Hot Pockets and in fucking Pop-Tarts, drinking some yummy shit like this, and uh, just ride it out for a year. They ride it out a year and leave us to our own devices with no power? That's 90. That's 90%. That's what they're estimating. 90%. Let's see, how the hell do New York have more guns than Utah? <laughs> I I know, I know, right? I don't know, man. I don't know. Detroit just needs to be nuked from orbit and re-inhabited by St. Long by citizens. You know, the sad thing is, man, <clears throat> the sad thing is this. Look, I, I, I grew up in the suburbs, but there were points where we lived... We lived in the inner city. We lived in uh, some really ghetto ass areas, and then my folks, they were able to get us into uh, suburbs and get us into middle class America, and it was great. You know, um, yeah, you know, Gray Man. I don't know. I pulled those numbers. I actually had to join a site to have access to their statistics, and so it's a pretty legit data mining company that I got them from. Um, and they had further research and other things as well. And I was like, this is good enough to make the fucking point. Um, because while everybody's sitting there arguing about gun control and this, that, and everything else, I think it's bullshit. I think it's all theater. I think they do that to spur us and get us to buy more guns. I mean, shit, I've got shit laying all over the place, you know, and I roll around with fucking bullets on my wrist and shit, you know, like it's the wild fucking West. And it's not like I want the shit to go fucking bananas. You know what I mean? I really don't. But, you know, the problem, you know, they're, they're, they create these hot zones like Detroit. Okay? They create those environments. And those make no mistakes. Those environments were created because socially, you know, you look at um, Pruitt. Oh, what is it? There was an experiment. Pruitt something uh, housing. I can't remember the name of it. Just look up Pruitt housing. You'll find it. Where they made these fucking beautiful living environments, but they basically kind of gave it away and they monitored it. It was a big science experiment, basically. And what they found was the motherfuckers went nuts, destroyed all the shit, just fucked it all up badly. And we've seen time and time again, the answer is not to just give motherfuckers shit, right? You can give somebody help, but put conditions on it and say, look... You're going to get the help, but you are not going to sit at home and not do anything. You're going to learn a trade. You're going to learn something. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. And then that way, somebody feels like they earned it. It's kind of like if you give a kid, you give a kid an Xbox. The kid didn't deserve it. Didn't earn it. You just give him a fucking Xbox. Oh, yeah, that's a fun one, too. Uh, the Stanford prison experiment. Guards and, and criminals and people fall into roles and shit. But you... uh. You give a kid something of value. They don't understand the intrinsic value of what you've given them. They just think it's something cool. They play with it and they break it. They don't give a fuck about it because they didn't earn it. I remember I wanted a bike so bad when I was a kid. I wanted one of these Huffies with the rims and shit so fucking bad. And my dad said, fine, motherfucker, you go work. 
you know, go do a paper route, something, and you save up your fucking money, and I'll help you get the fucking bike. And I did. I fucking worked that fucking bullshit paper route four or five months. You know, every fucking thing, I need my two dollars, whatever. So I had enough money to get about half. My dad said, cool. So he got me a bike. Man, I fucking babied that bitch. I fucking cleaned it. I took care of it because I earned that motherfucker. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, it's kind of like even now with me, somebody will send me a knife to review and it's a good knife, but the knife that I pay for the knife that I'm like, okay, I had to do a bunch of work to get that particular knife. I tend to treat that knife a lot better than one that somebody just sent me to test, you know, because if I could, oh, fuck, it broke, whatever. You know what I mean? So yes, gray man. Give a man a fish, feed him for a day. Teach him to fish, feed him for life. That is exactly right. You know, that's kind of the problem I have too because you got parables, you got things that are in the Bible, and you got people that are very anti-religious uh, and they don't want to even listen or hear anything. But the, the sad thing is, in addition to moral foundational compasses to help people out, there's also some common sense shit in there to kind of teach some fucking lessons. And it's not just in the Bible. There's books, things, you know, the little things with fucking pages and words on it that a lot of the youngsters are like, fuck that. I don't want to read. That's that's the travesty and problem going on now. So what I think is going to happen, and I was talking to my daughter about this earlier, and I was like, yeah, it's like fucking grandmaster playing chess against a three-year-old, and we're the three-year-olds. You know, these motherfuckers do a bunch of shit, and we're all reactive, 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 and nobody gets out in front of this shit. Let's see. We need a, uh, about 100,000 welders in the next five years. I like the biblical solution. He who does not work should not eat. Hunger is a big motive. You know what? That's, I hate to say it, but that's where shit's going to go anyway. And it's going to be rough for motherfuckers like me. You know, I, I could, I can, I'm funny. I could do things. I have ideas. But physically, you know, I'm, I'm beat. I'm broken in a lot of ways. So if the things were to go bad and the lights go out and suddenly we get back to fucking imagine when Rome fell and all of the stuff that they had going for them was gone. And they were freaking the fuck out. Like, what do we do now? There's no Roman soldiers or anything to protect us. Uh, we don't have an infrastructure anymore. You can look at the fall of the Soviet union. That shit was fucking fun. Not really. Uh, but they learned how to barter and everything, but it was a different environment. Russia didn't have property ownership. Most fuckers were renting, so when their system fell, people just stayed where the fuck they were, and they, they did this bartering and things of that nature. So I definitely think, you know, I bring this stuff up not to freak you guys out or anything, but it's to get your mind prepped for if things do become more adverse and they do go crazy, you've given it some thought beforehand, so you kind of have a loose idea what you might do if shit hits the fan. You know, I'm not saying it's going to end up being Mad Max beyond Thunderdome and shit like that. At least not for the first year. Maybe by year four or five, it might be fucking Thunderdome-ish. But, you know, before that, you know, it's going to be it's going to be fucking nuts. Um, and so, you know, for us that have kids uh, and, and other folks that we love that we have to take care of, we're the fucking, you know, uh, the sheep sheepdogs and shit, you know, looking after them. It's going to be rough because we're going to be the ones that are going to have to make the rough decisions because we're the ones that have the stomach for it. We're the ones that have the mindset to even think about the shit in the first hand. So when, you know, zombies pop up, pow, pop them in the fucking head, you know, something else happens. Hey, we know what to do. Hey, we know a lot of uses with duct tape. You know what I mean? So it's just some of those things that I want to, you know, I want to make sure each time I do one of these things, I keep reminding you motherfuckers to keep your head on a swivel because my daughter has been having like me and my daughter were kind of, my daughter's kind of like me in some aspects, like my stories and a lot of my creative ideas and stuff, they come to me in dreams. And so a lot of times I don't take, the credit for the stories is more like I feel like I'm watching a show and then I come back and I'm rewriting the show that I've been watching. Okay. Whereas my daughter, she has dreams and they're very abstract. And she had a dream recently that really put me on edge because uh, part of me finding religion, my version of religion and everything was a series of dreams that scared the shit out of me. Well, she had a dream that was very reflective of that dream but her darkness and clouds and stuff were like black with red and energy tendrils shooting through it and, you know, doing all these different stuff. And it was very ominous and she was very, very 
shook up about it. And so I keep telling her, you know what? I have this unnerving feeling that there is a storm on the horizon too. And for a lot of, you know, reliant individuals like me and a lot of you guys, we've been kind of sounding that alarm for many, many fucking years. But it does have this almost tangible feel to it that's a little unnerving at this point. So I feel like I'm waiting for the other boot to drop you know i'm just waiting for it and it's kind of it's kind of freaky but uh i didn't want this to be all doom and gloom so we're done with the news aspect of things i'm going to take a sip of my delicious coca-cola which is given to me courtesy of subways no i'm just fucking around they're not sponsoring me or anything i just wanted to sound like subways was sponsoring me because that would be legit as fuck right this episode is brought to you by subways who makes delicious sandwiches and they have the colors of the fucking irish fucking a beauty a Okay, anyway. Ah! SoundCloud from Art of Manless Explorers, the fall of the Roman Republic, how that played into the end of the Roman Empire. Yeah. Fall of empires happens all the fucking time. Uh, yeah, we're getting stupidly close. I'm very lucky to have enough skills to be useful, but I'm also lucky to be young enough to be able to survive. Fucking A, Gray Man. All right. Let's let's change the topic here. Let's get into some of the fun stuff here. So, I had a chance to watch... Justice League. I'm no, no spoilers or anything else, but I'm not a DC fan. Okay, so as I watched it, I was like, yeah, I'm entertained. This is fun. Okay, had a little bit of humor, this, that, and everything else. But I gotta tell you guys, I gotta tell you guys, out of all of them, the motherfucker that won my heart and I absolutely love the most, besides Wonder Woman, who's hot as the fucking sun. Oh my God, Wonder Woman is uh, the Flash. The Flash is fucking awesome. 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 Somebody, I saw this video where the guys were complaining, uh, uh, doing, talking about Flash, and he was like, the shit they said, I was like, damn, Flash is fucking powerful. Flash is a badass motherfucker. But he's a fun guy, so, you know, it's not like you got to worry about him being uber fucking evil and shit. At least he might, I don't know. Like I said, I don't read DC Comics. Maybe he does become a fucking evil bastard, but it was kind of cool. There was a lot of fun parts in the movie it was it was good it was good and i gotta say wonder woman and flash they could just make a movie with those two and i'd be happy because wonder woman provides me all the eye candy and ask oh my god she kicks ass she's badass and i'm really happy about that because it's about fucking time there's a positive strong female role model for my daughters and them to look at and say fuck yeah you know not not just pretty but fucking badass you know um she was knocked up filming that movie. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I had a vasectomy, so I know it ain't me. You know, she's not supposed to talk about our interaction and whatnot. You know. <laughs> um, yeah, you know what? Um, they might have lost some money, but they'll make it up internationally. They'll make it up. Um, Justice Lee from us all was still pretty stupid. It hasn't even been a full movie in between Superman dying and coming back to life. Yeah, that was a big complaint. Even my daughter complained about that. Continuity-wise, it seems like a lot of the stuff with DC, like even the first Batman versus Superman, um, you know, they put Batman versus Superman and the death of Superman story arcs together. So I don't know why DC is in such a rush to do it. They could pace this shit out like Marvel's doing with the whole Infinity stuff. I mean, they really paced their shit out. But... I think DC is just trying to catch up and get as much stuff out there so they can push product out and try to try to catch up with what Marvel's doing. So I don't know. I mean, and, and it was rushed and it did mix in several things. Um, and I was disappointed that it didn't have a certain bad guy that I had hoped to see in there. But uh, the end credits were kind of fun and everything. You know, it, 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 it was all right. It was all right. I mean, I liked it. I liked it. It was fun for me to go out and watch a movie. And again, you know, it's one of those things I can go watch something and just, you know, go in with no expectation and I'm happy with it. I think a lot of people had high, high, high expectations. I went in and watched it and was like, yeah, it's good. It's fun. You know, same as when I watched Thor. One side was like, yeah, it's fun. The comic book nerd in me, though, oh, my God, I was so fucking pissed. You know what I mean? So I, that's why I know there's a lot of DC heads that were like, Fuck this movie. Worst fucking movie ever. ever. But I was kind of like, yeah, it was all right. It was fun. I enjoyed it. So, fuck. It is what it is. Um, now. Holy fuck. I finished watching The Punisher on Netflix. 
And I paced myself. I didn't binge watch it. I, I spanned it over three nights. And um, it was a beautiful story, man. It, it, it was a beautiful story. It wasn't what I thought it was going to be. It had, man, it had some authentic PTSD shit in there. It, it talked about a lot of stuff. Um, yeah, exactly. Two extremes. DC's going one way and Marvel's fucking slow. Marvel's milking every chance they get. Let's make, you know, Infinity, let's make that two movies. We're going to split Avengers and then Avengers the next year. And that way we can, man, what are you, fucking Lord of the Rings? Yeah, that kind of irks me, but... When it comes to shit like uh, on Netflix, I've been real happy with it. I've been super happy with it. No spoilers there, but I thought they did a good story front to back, establishing, you know, there was a couple things that I saw coming ahead of time, but for the most part, it was good. It was good. It, it had some real touching moments, and it really got into the heart of Frank Castle, and I dug it. I thought it was really good. I thought it was pretty good. Now, another... Marvel thing that I've been checking out recently, uh, they're they're up to uh, episode three of this is uh, Runaways, and I am not familiar with the comic at all, at all, and I'm watching, it, and this is a pretty slow paced thing too. They're building the shit up, and I'm 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 like this, I'm watching the motherfucker like this. Hmm, hmm, what the fuck? What's going on? What the what is that shit? Whoa, what the fuck? And my wife's watching it too. She's like. Yeah, I don't know if this is going to do very good, you know, because she's wanting to see powers and all this other shit. And they are they're building the foundation of the characters. And I'm kind of like, what the fuck happened to their friend? Like, it's interesting. It's interesting. So I've watched two so far. I'm going to watch the third one tonight. But I'm excited. I'm actually enjoying it. Um, no, actually, they didn't go into that. At least I don't recall them talking about Batman's parents getting killed. I don't think so. But there there are some predictable parts in there that were kind of like, what the fuck? Now, if Marvel continues to allow these studios to push out things and put the amount of effort and work into them that they're doing with these shows, like Punisher, Runaways, then I have pretty high hopes for one of my favorites, which is Cloak and Dagger. Uh, I'm a little nervous about it. But at the same time, I'm kind of optimistic. I'm hoping they'll do a good job with it. I like the casting so far of the primary characters, and so it'll be good. I did watch The Walking Dead up to a certain point, um, and then we fell off. And then there was all these other spoilers that popped up that nobody could ever hide. Uh, but I have not been current on my Walking Dead. Uh, my my show times that I usually watch stuff have been severely limited, so it's like I've been kind of just picking and choosing. Like I watched a little bit of the Inhumans and got bored with that, and then I started watching a little bit of like I fell off on um, Agents of Shield and missed a whole Johnny Blaze uh, Ghost Rider shit, which looks fucking awesome. So yeah, there's a lot of shit I've got queued up to watch. I just don't have the fucking time, you know. Uh, let's see, at least Lord Rings had enough material to actually make three movies. I've had the extended release for like 10 years and rewatch it constantly. Also, superb acting in the first uh, Lord of the Rings trilogy. Yeah, it's epic. No doubt about it. I've watched the extended one probably twice now with my kids. It's really good. Um, so I'm hoping... Oh, look at this shit over here. This thing is stupid. Renew, and then... No. Okay. Um... So, yeah, so I got high hopes for Cloak and Dagger. One, you know, only time that I got in real bad trouble was I stole the first issue of Cloak and Dagger from the local 7-Eleven, and some paramedics outside fucking called it in, and cops came, and it was right across the street. My dad came across. They knew all my, they, all the motherfuckers knew my dad. So I was like, oh, fucking great. I was like, take me to jail. They're like, no, you go to Mr. Rick's. And my dad beat my ass for days over that shit. So Cloak and Dagger has a special spot in my heart, so I hope they do not fuck it up. Okay, now I did find a couple of trailers uh, that are pretty good. I'm going to share some of those with you right now for your viewing viewing enjoyment. And while you do that, I'm going to drink a little bit more. Close your eyes. See with mine. You were a top student, but look at you now. 
You can't keep using your father's disappearance as an excuse to act out. Is that his work? Well, what's it about? Their dad, he wanted to touch the stars. Imagine that the ant here wants to get to her other hand. The quickest option is to walk across the street. But it turns out a straight line is not the shortest distance between two points. Not if you use a fifth dimension. It's outside of the rules we know of time and space. So the ant arrives in my hand instantaneously. So you fall to space. More likely wrinkle it. Where are we? We heard a cry out in the universe. Father's alive. We believe he is, and we're here to help you find him. We are in search of warriors. Warriors who serve the good and the light in the universe. You're kidding. Do I look like I'm kidding? A little. I'm not. I'm not. Your father's trapped by an evil energy. It's too strong for our light. And the only one who can stop it is you. Be a warrior. So there is a lot of symbolism. Let's see if I can get this thing where it's supposed to be. There we go. There was a lot of symbolism in that shit that was, you know, kind of goosebumpy, kind of whoa, what the fuck? Um, that was kind of freaky. This thing is still not sized right. Let's go like this. There we go. Now we're all now we're all on the same fucking page here. Um, I don't know. I got mixed feelings about that show. Like it looks to be interesting. And there are a couple of parts on that really gave me pause. Like, hmm, interesting, you know. And it's got Kirk, and it's got Wolfpack, and it's got Oprah. It's got a bunch of motherfuckers in it. It looks it looks entertaining to say the least. But I think there's some subtext there that I'm watching pretty carefully. Uh, a lot of times, for those who don't follow the conspiratorial mind, movies convey certain things. Like, they kind of, like, out in the open, hidden messages for the masses that they're trying to condition your mind for certain things. And there's a lot in there. Remember, I was talking about storm coming and things of that nature and the, the darkness that's coming and the light can, you know, break away the darkness. You know, you know some of this stuff is interesting uh, to, to say the least, you know, you, sometimes you got to ignore shit like Oprah doesn't look like she has a big prominent role. looks like she's a member of a group of elders or something. And, um, you know, she's annoying as shit, but she can't act. So, uh, I, I give her, I give her a pass. And so, you know, I kind of was looking at Wolfpack, like the fuck is he doing in there trying to play a kind of quasi serious role? Cause talking about death and life there. And, you know, he's like, I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm like, okay, fuck. You are the, you know, the antithesis of fucking uh, serious. You're, you're a joke. But anyway, uh, there's that one. And then I have another funny one, but I'm going to save that to the end because the next two here are a little more on the heavy side. So I figured I'd go heavy, heavy, and then end the trailers with a funny, and then we'll get into the jokes and the memes and shit like that. So let's go check this one out. This one really surprised me, and I'm excited to see this. It looks to be a good horror flick, so check this one out. Five seconds left. No. Four, three, two, one. Time's up. 
He's coming. Mary, get back in the circle, quick! I don't want to play this game and- Salt shake. You must never fall asleep or stay in the same place during the game. Is she gonna be all right? You said she fainted in the attic. I've never seen her so scared. You're playing the game, aren't you? What game? The Midnight Man. This is no game for kids or bored teenagers. The Midnight Man is utterly ruthless. <laughs> if your candle blows out, you must relight it in 10 seconds. If it doesn't relight, surround yourself with a circle of salt for protection. If any of these rules are broken, the Midnight Man will manifest your worst nightmares. The Midnight Man doesn't like to lose. You mean he cheats? I'm protected. He's very, very good at it. Red is the color of your blood! You guys are just playing with me, right? It's just a game. Fuck. Shh. Shit like that, shit like that right there. That reminds me of fucking motherfucking war games back in the day. Shall we play a game? No. Strange game. The only winning move is not to play. That's that's that shit right there. You don't want to fucking play that shit. You know what I mean? I was like, what in the literal fuck? You never break the fucking ring. Ever. And, and the fact that she... <laughs> Normally, you kind of want it the other way around. You kind of want the salt around the shit because then it can't affect outside. So we saw some really interesting things there where it was cheating. It used other things around to break the salt, which I thought was, oh, baby. I was like, somebody is thinking outside the box and being creative with their horror shit, and I dig it. I dig it. All right, now, this one right here, Joaquin Phoenix, this shit is dark as fuck. I watched it twice because I was like, holy shit. So here we go. This one is, uh, I think it's, you're not really here, or you were never really here, or something like that. So check this shit out. It's, woo. Where do you spend your time? What do you do? All day long. It's done. The man called. And he wants to see you. State Senator Albert Vato. He doesn't want to get the cops involved. He wants to meet you. You have kids, Joe? Nina. Her name is Nina. 235 East 31st Street. I've heard of these places. If she's there, I'll get her. It does. Cleary said you were brutal. I can be. Look, you see this girl? Inside? Security. How many are there? Close your eyes. New York State Senator has been found dead in an apparent suicide. And I don't know what the fuck's going on here.
Yeah, it's a beautiful day. Woo! Yeah, you don't break the fucking circle. I use salt <clears throat> around my threshold in the house and stuff. Like, I put a line of salt in front of my door. But it's not regular salt. It's, uh, it's black salt. <clears throat> so I have this black salt here. It's like, um cypress black lava salt uh and this i like this because it blends so people don't see like the big line of white uh so you can hide your salts a little better and still kind of protect your surroundings and stuff from the negative and shit like that there's a lot of cool shit you can do with salt like uh you can take a little bit of salt and when you're bathing just rub it around like your arms and stuff like that and it's like it's it kind of scrubs the skin a little bit makes it feel a little better and kind of rejuvenates you i don't know it might be just be some placebo with me but i always have salt with me i have salt in the car salt here salt in my bags because you never fucking know you know what i mean so i know <laughs> tinfoil hat here we go all right let's see i know right hammer time that's i fucking i Man, I did a video probably a year ago talking about the dangers of hammers, but nobody listened to me. Okay, I'm going to end with a comedy one. I, I like these types of comedies because it reminds me of the fucking ghetto days and shit, and it's just fucking funny. Um, some, of you, some of you guys might not like this humor. I personally do. I think this shit is fucking hilarious to me, so I'm going to share it with you. Uh, I might fucking laugh or giggle as we're watching this because... <laughs> It's your boss. Like, now listen, me exactly. and your Uncle Leon, we in here for bank robbery. How much money? A million dollars. The money's in the wall in this flop house in the basement. Oops. They're turning the flop house into a frat house. What are we going to do? We're broke. I'm going to get in by joining the fraternity. It's your pledge, master. I'm about to see who has what it takes. This your toothbrush. You want to see the cave of treasures? Oh, there she go. What is wrong? Oh, it's got the tongue scraper. Go, go. What happens now? I just need you to keep him busy while I look for the money. I'm not fucking him. You want me to fuck him? What? That's a million dollars. You ladies know our resident sex burp. This first move taught to me by a very special woman. Thanks, Mom. Oh! oh. You guys know what racist parties they had last year. No fly list. I've been working on the railroad. They want you to build a wall outside. Right outside the front. They're like, he, he doesn't like even speak English. English. I'm like, he does speak English, right? I'm not mistaken. Okay. Looking for an African-American gentleman. Skin tone is sort of uh, right in between you in the front and you in the back. Where's my son? Mommy, how am I going to focus on getting up in that pussy no. when all you can talk about is what came out of it? Come on with the mama stuff, man. Cap Alpha Chi for life. Cap <laughs> Alpha Chi for life. Woo! You know there's like a bunch of dicks on your face? Like a bunch. Yeah, there's a lot of them. So I don't know if that shit already came out or if it's coming out fucking next year. It's one of those type of things, you know, It's it looks like a direct-to-video type shit. I don't fucking know, you know. It's just one of those things. Here, let's get into the uh, the jokey jokes and stuff. Check this out. All right, so we got, why use Google when Jesus has all the answers? Wink, wink. I'm not going to ask Jesus where to find midget porn. <laughs> oh, you fucking got to love the fucking internet. You think you're one of us? You fucking disgust me. I've killed more people than you. <laughs> That's some real shit right there. Fucking Ronald McDonald's, he's a cold motherfucking piece. He done killed hella motherfuckers. For realies. Let's see what we got here. Next time you're having a bad day, think of this squirrel. Oh. Oh, oh. oh my fucking hell. That poor bastard. He's just hanging by his nuts. Oh, shit. That sucks. Other squirrels must be running around just laughing at his ass. You dumb motherfucker. <laughs> Oh, shit, that's great. Not in the ass. Oh, God. Oh, look at this. This is your brain. This is your brain on drugs. Don't do drugs. This is your butthole. Here's a butthole in prison. Don't shoplift, motherfuckers. That's good. 
Now, again, we were talking about shit like this last week. Okay. This is the Wicked Walk Chinese restaurant. And they must be harassed by people looking for cats so often. They said, no, we no see, see cat of yours. No more ass, please. <laughs> Man, I had McDonald's the, uh, yesterday, so I ain't tripping. She had told him for the last time, never Facebook message that bitch again. He didn't listen. Now, you know, I'm a knife guy because I looked at this. Or actually not. An, yeah, you know what? That's funny. That's not even a knife. That's a fucking pitchfork. I thought those were shears when I first looked at it. Now I'm looking at it uh, closer. Does a fucking pitchfork or, or uh, what do you call that? Uh, pickaxe. Yeah, pickaxe will definitely do that. I was more impressed with the you know, damage being done to it. Okay, now for your motherfucking viewing pleasure. This shit had me in stitches. I fucking cried earlier over this shit. Here we go. Hey. What's this? What, what's this right? It's a fence? I like the fence. What, it's a rope. I likes the rope. Come here, rope. Come, come here, rope. Come, come, come here. God damn it, rope. There it is. Okay, I'm going to use you. I'm going to scratch my back. Oh, scratch my back. God damn, that fucking feels good. Shut up! Oh, okay. Oh, my balls. Oh, my balls. Oh, oh my fucking balls. Oh my fucking balls! Oh my, my fuck! Oh god! Fucking damn it! The fucking fucking rope! You fuck my balls up! You fucking rope! Oh god, I'm good. I'm good. No, I'm not. Oh fuck my balls! Oh my fucking balls! Play it off! Play it off! Play it off! Oh fucking play it off! Fucking play it off! <laughs> Oh my fucking god, that bear snapped his balls. I was in stitches. I was dying earlier. I had literal tears running out of my fucking eyes. That shit, I didn't know that bears responded to their balls getting hit the same as we do. That made me feel good. That made me feel like I have a chance against a fucking bear. Because if shit goes fucking raw and he's over me, I'm going to fucking try to hit him in the balls. See if I can get him to uh, run away from me or something. Exactly. See, Tom? That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Anyway. Let's see here. We're getting uh, getting near the end of the show. Let's get some fucking... Let's get a couple cards out. Let's 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 look at some fucked up scenarios and, and talk them through. Because that's, that's what we do on the Jackalope show. We, we talk about crazy shit so that we can learn together. So we got some more conflicted... La, 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 la. And, you know, at some point, I'm probably going to buy some more of the more current ones. Let's see. No, we already fucking read that one. We're not doing that one. Uh, we're going back to those. No, we fucking read. Wow. Random. I picked two out, and that's the motherfuckers here. Let's see here. All right. Nope. We saw that one already. Um, hmm. 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 That's a good one. We're going to keep that one. Okay, we already did a variant of that one. Oh. Oh, fuck yeah. Okay. All right. Here we go. I got two, motherfuckers. We got two. Are you looking forward to Deadpool 2? Oh, man. Does the bear take a shit in the woods, man? Yes. I'm looking so very much forward to the Deadpool 2. I'm not going to lie about it, my friend. Who's he talking about? I want to get high off of all the natural splendor. God, I love cocaine. Yeah, that's a funny one. All right. Here we go. Here we go. I got to do my ominous voice for this shit, okay? I got to look stern and serious. Here we go. 
Russia, China, Iran, North Korea, Venezuela declared war against the United States due to the death of the dollar, which led to a complete collapse of the global fiat money system. They blame the U.S. government for ruining the global financial markets and are using propaganda to get the support of their own people. Your country's president has gone on TV and declared that there are rough times ahead, that all citizens need to prepare for World War III. What would you do? After hearing this, get you to rock eyebrow. Can you smell what the Rob has cooking in my noggin? Well, what the first three fucking things you're, you do? Oh, my face is in Deadpool's ass. <laughs> Smells like cinnamon. <laughs> Smells like cinnamon and uh, apple cider. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, yeah, Tom, that would be a good idea. Except we don't have any fucking gold left. All the gold's gone. It's all gone, 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 gone. Lock and load, motherfucker. Yeah, you know, so... First, first three things I would do is fucking already done. I'm already kind of in a perpetual state of readiness. So there's really nothing more for me to do. Um, some would say go run out, fill up your gas tanks. That's fine. Um, I don't live in a major city. So if I lived in a major city, I think the very first thing I would do is contact family that lives somewhere else and tell them, hey, motherfuckers, I'm coming because... Shit gets really bad. You don't want to be in the big cities. You don't. Uh, and those are also going to be targets for any kind of invasionary force anyway. Uh, it wouldn't go to nukes. Because even if we're broke, we still got our fucking nukes. Um, that's kind of a silly card when you stop and think about it. Because even if we did, you know, drop the monetary bomb and everything went bye-bye. What the fuck are they going to do? It was like, all right, motherfuckers, yeah, come on, bring it. You know what I mean? Fucking uh, Japan could have kept going after Pearl Harbor. They could have kept going through, but they fucking knew better. The motherfucking tactician there said, no, we can't invade America because every behind every blade of grass is a fucking gun waiting for us. And in fact, we've got damn near a gun for every man, woman, and child on in America right now in the households. Over 45... What is it? 45% of the houses in America have more than one gun. So, I don't think, I don't, I, the, the idea of them doing like some Red Dawn type shit and coming in invading is pretty remote. Now, not to say they could do something to knock out our fucking infrastructure with an EMP. That would be a bitch, but I would suspect if we saw anything coming near us, we'd fucking pop their shit too. So. Um, yeah, exactly, Tom. All right, that was kind of a bleh, card. This one's kind of interesting, though. I like this card. This card is an interesting one, okay? You see a wave of men in orange inmate suits walking down the street towards your home. They have pipes, makeshift clubs in their hands, but do not seem to be breaking into anyone's homes or bothering anyone. At this distance... You could take most of them out with your AR-10. AR-10 or AR-15? I think that's supposed to be AR-15. I guess it could be AR-10. Once they get close, you'll be overwhelmed if they try to jump you. Do you take the chance and let them pass? Or do you start shooting people who have done nothing to you? Why? I'll lean over here so I'm not in Deadpool's ass. Let's see if I go like this. Go this way, right? Deadpool. Cards disappearing in his asshole. It's gone. Me personally, I don't shoot. No fuckers ain't doing no shit. I don't give a fuck. I don't care if they are wearing orange. I'm not about to give away my position if they're not going and looting houses and shit like this. AR-10. Okay, 7.62. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, but you're taking a chance, though. Because they've got enough there... 
according to the card, even though the card kind of contradicts itself at one point, it says you could take most of the amount, uh, but once they get close, you will be overwhelmed if they try to jump you. I'm not doing shit. I don't, I don't look for conflict. If they're not going, like, if they're just heading down, fucking let them go. You know? Um, this is a different time. I give less than a fuck. You don't start no shit, won't be no shit. You keep going, you keep going. I'm, I don't give a fuck, you know? I'd keep, I'd keep, I'd keep watching them. I'd watch them until they are way the fuck out of range, and I'd make sure I'm not making any noise to let them know I'm there, you know? But you could bet I'd set up a lot of fucking booby traps if I knew that many motherfuckers in orange are walking around. It's only a matter of time before they start to get desperate or something else. So I'd, I'd keep my ear to the ground and keep an eye on what's going on, and I'd probably move my location opposite opposite direction. So if they're heading this way, I'm heading that way, you know? And if someone says, hey, you see a bunch of guys in oranges? Not me, man. I don't see shit. Mm-mm. Because that, you know, don't start no shit, won't be no shit. That, that, that applies there as well. All right, guys, that's it. We are six minutes past the hour. I went a little bit more. But fuck you, it was a fun, fun episode. I kind of talked a little bit about some other stuff that I wanted to talk about. Make sure we are all keeping our heads on a swivel, looking around, paying attention, and trying to stay optimistic. I was telling my kids um, the day before Thanksgiving, I was like, the darkness is definitely trying to overwhelm us, and there is only one thing that scatters the darkness, and that's the light. So you have to be a positive person filled with love and hope so that you can survive anything that comes at you. Uh, let's see here. By attacking first, you're inviting a survivor to attack you. And if Murphy's Law is anything to lean on, it could end you. It could end in you dying. Yeah. Yep. You know. And I try my best to do what's right and everything else, but understand that landscape shifts and changes. The landscape of morality shifts and changes depending on what's going on at that time. You know what's acceptable right now might not be acceptable if things collapse and vice versa so anyway um let's see am i going to get one more show next week let's see uh yes i have one more show and then there's going to be a two week two week period where i won't be here um, and I won't have technological ability to make, um, a video. So what I'll try to do is I'll try to make some videos beforehand. I've got some stuff to review. I'll queue those up so that even when I'm gone, there's still videos popping off that you guys can check out and stuff. But I do have one more show next week. Same bad time, same bad channel and all that jazz. So that's it for now. If you guys like it, like it, please subscribe. Tell your friends far and wide. Until next time, motherfuckers, please be good to yourself. Good to each other. Go live life. Get some fucking scars. Ride the bus until the wheels fall off and all that other fun shit. And, um, oh, I'm, I'm sure we probably, we might be able to. I think there might be a way for me to challenge you directly, Tom. And I think we both get like 80 coins just for challenging each other. So I'm going to scroll back up and find your, your name. It's Iratus Nation, right? I'm going to, um, I think that's what I saw, Iratus Nation. I think that's it. Um, I'll try to find it, and, and I'll, I'll try to add you in the social thing. Um, but, yeah, that's it. So be good, guys. Be safe. Keep your head on the swivel, seriously. Uh, and be very, very, very fucking safe. All right? Okay, guys. Oh, Irate Nation. Perfect. Okay, guys, later. Exactly, Jay.